two. We've got this air-cooled RTAA. The, uh, the EXV on circuit one is having trouble. We actually did end up replacing this EXV several months ago, actually. And it hasn't given us any trouble. But this morning, he came to uh, check on it. And yeah, EXV electric drive circuit one. So we need to uh, need to see what's going on there. So these are my EXVs here. Circuit one, circuit two. Plugs look okay. Ah, look at that. That harness may not be any good. We did not replace the harness when we were here. So that may be an issue now that other chiller we're about to change it out it had a busted barrel from when the freeze back in February came through go to chiller report I want to see what the water temps are running 4850 okay so we're not too extreme I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the service test EXV circuit one. Oh, it's not gonna let me do it. Let's it stop. All right, so right now it's sliding the valve to the unload position on the compressor, bringing the load down, the amps down for startup, and then it kicks out. And this one's just on a straight cross the line contact. Nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, so service test. I want to actuate one, then I'll go to enable and go. Okay, so I can hear it. Yep, I can physically hear it actuating, or at least trying to. Can we see it? It looks like it did move. Um. Alright, so that test has stopped by now. We're gonna re enable it one more time. Now that the refrigerant is equalized in there. So, what this will do is when the test is finished, this will automatically go back to disabled. Go so enabled again, enter. And all it's doing is it's just actuating the drive on the uh, valve. Yeah, no, it's definitely opening. So it dead heads closed. Now it's opening. You saw it open. All right, it dead headed open. Now it's gonna go back closed. And you'll see it come back down here in just a second. Right there, that's the plunger. And then bam, all right, it just dead headed closed. That tells me the valve's okay. And like I said, we, we just replaced that valve. What we did not replace was this, which this is the 1U1, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that's what's left of our schematic. I think that's the main power. So just to confirm which board it is we're looking at. So one U1 is not running the valves. Where are the valves running off of? This terminal J4, J5 off of the valve or board. 
J7. J5, J4 right there. Expansion valve. J4, circuit one, yeah. That is the 1U3. So this is the 1U3 module. One of the common things that happens is these will not get plugged in quite right, but they are definitely plugged in properly. This does look like an older module. It is pretty stinking hot. Like, that joker is... It's, it's, it's pretty warm to the touch. Now, granted, this is just a cover, so... It's just hot in here because it's been baking all day, but... Genuinely, this makes me want to replace that. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to go into diagnostic. Uh, shutdown has occurred, yes. Let's just make sure there's no other diagnostics. The so last diagnostic, EXV, EXV. Okay. So we're going to go right here. Press enter to clear circuit one. It's going to reboot the controls. Now what the customer said is when he did this earlier today, it immediately uh, re-triggered the alarm. Alright, we just re-triggered. Shutdown has occurred. EXV drive one, okay. This, I'm, I'm pretty confident at this point, this is, there's something wrong with this module. Um, the board is is good. We've run it through a self or a, a, a calibration test. It didn't have any trouble. You saw it actuate. Now we're gonna verify something here because I'm pretty confident this chiller that we're about to take out is the exact same chiller, RTAA 104 XQ01. And what I'm thinking is we may be able to pull that 1U3 module out of this one. And repurpose it because this chiller is completely condemned it doesn't run okay rta 101004 xt i think the other one said xq but i think that'll be close enough we'll get it opened up and we can actually reference the uh board numbers between the two of them just to confirm okay this is our board that number is gonna be right up top they are actually identical numbers, so they are an, a matching set. Uh, let me call the customer, and I'm gonna verify with them that they're okay, and we just do a switch out on between those two boards. The customer has approved it, so let's go kill power, and then we will pull the uh, the other one apart. Okay, let me get my meter. We'll confirm voltage is dead. Okay, got the new board in. Give chiller one power. Now the idea is we can take that bad board and uh, put it back in this old one. And hopefully, because they've only got one circuit that kind of sort of works, but they never actually run it unless this one goes completely down. Hopefully this will save them. So far no alarm, so we're good. I'm gonna go auto. I hear, I've heard the valves calibrating, so that's the first thing to do at power up. You're gonna calibrate your, your EXVs. They did so. His automation is not calling. I heard the pumps shut down. Okay, his automation switched to the other chiller. Yeah, let's do that. Manually turn that one on. If I remember correctly, the way these are set up, they get start stop from the flow. And so the automation turns the pump on, gives us the chiller flow. Once it sees flow, it sees that as the start stop closure, contact, and then it's about to turn on. So, so far so good. So we are back online. Circuit two is pulling us down. I'm just waiting. It, it'll bring on circuit one with the, the load that we have. I'm just going to let it do it naturally. I'm not going to force it. MTT, guys, make time for your family. Make time for your spouse. I'll probably have to tell the customer. He needs to go back and, there it goes, manually switch the pumps uh, or the automation to chiller one being back in lead instead of chiller two. Uh, that way I can put that pump back in auto. I don't have to leave it in hand. We're good. We're coming up. It looks beautiful.
Let's see what our refrigerant report's doing. So we got a 10 degree, 10 degree superheat. Can enter set, looks fine. It's, I mean, it's, it's pretty hot out right now. Circuit one's ramping up. We'll make sure that saturation stays up, which it is. Yep, it's controlling fine. So it'll every time it loads up on the on the slide valve, you'll see that saturation take a nose dive, and then it'll slowly work its way back up as the valve opens up. So they work in unison together. That took care of it. So that module is our problem. Valve's working good. Got a working module in there. And that gets them out of a bind, it gets them down the road. A really good recommendation is probably going to be, I mean, yeah, they should go ahead and get a, a, another, a new 1U3 order just in case. But that's going to be at their discretion. We're pulled down to 52 now on the supply water. And it, it's, it's coming down real nice, getting both compressors on. We're pulling down real nice. Uh, we're down to 44 with a 52 entering Doing really really good. I got the other chiller back together. We're still fully loaded on both circuits But we're, we're getting down to set point now, so they'll start to unload the automation didn't get switched back over So it's now running. I got the the starter back in auto So we still uh, this the chiller one is is in lead so I did want to give a real quick breakdown of that valve and the troubleshooting of it just so you, for your future reference. So basically that motor is a two winding motor uh, that, and so it's a stepper style motor. Uh, actually engineering mindset has a very good um, uh, video explaining how electronic expansion valves and the stepper motors in them work what you can do is you can ohm out the stepper uh, windings and see if they're actually ohming okay they should have no resistance between the two windings but they should have the same resistance you know per set of windings as the other winding would um, it does vary valve to valve what that reading is so don't think that there's just one set standard that's going to be it's going to widely range depending on the valve short of ohming the the windings uh looking through that little sight glass that's one reason why they're there and most of your like chiller large commercial exvs are going to have that sight glass that is there for the purpose of looking um at the plunger inside of there to see is it actually moving or not now we could visibly see, and it was obvious, that that one was moving and it was doing what it was supposed to do. So if the valve plunger is moving like, it, like it's supposed to, and the windings and all checked fine, the valve itself should be in okay shape. Now one thing you have to be careful of is, if a valve is really noisy in the travel, if you go back and you listen to the footage, but you'll hear, you know, when the valve deadheads and it stops, it makes a loud ticking. Well, that ticking is, is because it, it got under a load because it, it hit its furthest point. Well, in between though, so between full open and full close, the valve was basically silent on that in between travel. And that's how it should be. One of the indicators that you know that those valves are starting to get weak, or at least the, the little uh, thread pieces in there that actuate that plunger in and out are, um, is when that valve becomes very noisy on the in-between travel. Now some noise is, is pretty normal, but when it gets to the point where it's very audible uh, in between uh, the, the full open and full close, that's not a good thing. So if I was to start hearing something like that uh, and I was getting that alarm, then I would be a little more concerned that we're not actually, uh, the, the plunger is not actually moving the full distance it needs to. And most of the time in a scenario like that, you're gonna see your superheat is not gonna control properly on your evaporator. You'll either have trouble running too much or too little superheat, depending on just kind of where that plunger is hanging up at. Uh, just a little uh, debrief on troubleshooting those types of EXVs and, uh, and, and that, that valve setup and type. With that, we'll call it. This one's good. We'll roll on to the next one. Hope you enjoyed it, guys.